Hey everyone, and welcome to this week's Friday Hacks discussion number 394, Assembler Flipping and Circuit Control. I'm Exterminator, and thanks for joining me today. And uh, we have some we have some good stuff today, some quality of life for sure, but really good quality of life uh, and a slight change at the end too, which I think everyone will like. So we finally get something that I've wanted for a long time, and honestly, basically forever, I've wondered why it hasn't been a thing, and uh, we get some answers to that today. So. Uh, Cobrex starts off by going into circuit controlling assemblers, basically. Uh, now I'm going to do some summarization, but uh, basically he starts off by saying the uh, being able to change the recipe of an assembly machine using circuit network is an obvious feature and we considered it in the past. The idea was always postponed as we didn't see an easy way to solve the problem of potentially having unrelated items to deal with when the recipe was changed. But the solution is actually pretty easy. We just create a special dump inventory in the assembly machine and put the extra items here. So you can see here is uh, is like the, the dump inventory, right? So this is for making wooden boxes. Uh, and then if you were to change it, uh, this you can see here they say that this was um, from a, a machine being controlled to produce wooden chests right after it was producing electronic circuits. And this was the leftovers from the electronic circuits. Uh, now there are a few other things with this. So like it won't, it will only check to change a recipe like once a recipe is done creating, so it's not gonna stop like halfway through the production bar of a green circuit and like switch it or something. It's gonna wait until that production cycle is done and then change it, which helps alleviate some of the issues as well, uh, which they just say right here. Uh, and then, uh, you know, they do say that you have to be careful when creating designs, which use circuit network to set recipes, as you must ensure that you can handle the leftover um, item output, which, uh, yeah, you do need to make sure you can do that, but. As long as you prepare ahead of time, you should be good to go on that front. Uh, and then uh, they added a bunch of uh, additional utilities for this. So with a circuit network, you can enable and disable, which is simply an on-off switch. You can set the recipe, which is really nice. Uh, read ingredients. So this, I think this could be really useful, is output the ingredients and count required for the current recipe. Uh, read recipe finished, so a one tick signal made it when the crafting cycle completes, and then read working and puts the signal continuously while the machine is crafting. Uh, so, I mean, I can see so many uses with this. Like, you know, if you don't want to use mods or something like bottleneck mod, uh, you can basically do that yourself now with this. Uh, you could just have it like output a signal to a lamp or something, and you know, it's red when there's no signal, it's green when there is, uh, and that would basically tell you if all your assemblers are working. Now, I don't know how that would work performance-wise in the game, but, uh, you know, that's just one thing you could do with it, especially the reading ingredients and, and such, I can see being super, super helpful. Uh, so, all of this is just absolutely fantastic, and I'm so glad we finally have these features. Uh, all these things together should make it possible to make some generic assembly setups for those who like to dig deeper into the automation of automation. Uh, so, I have no clue uh, what this is but uh i mean obviously i know what this is but i don't know what this is so um so yeah it, it's controlling it to do something but overall uh, i'm sure a lot of folks who like messing with the circuit network will really love this um well they say it's a set configured to craft high quality inserters from raw ingredients which looks really complicated but it's just switching the things so uh, then we get into blueprint flipping or uh, flipping for real, which is really nice. So this is going to where, where I'm going to do some summarization. So basically, initially, uh, blueprint flipping was uh, introduced in Factorio 1.1 release, allowing players to flip a set of items horizontally or vertically before placement, uh, which is a fantastic feature. I use it quite a lot. Uh, there are some caveats with it, though. So like you can't flip a blueprint that has like train signals in it. You can't flip a blueprint uh, where there's like fluid inputs, outputs. Uh, and some other things as well. So uh, basically, yeah, they just go into that here, uh, you know, the, where there can be some weirdness uh, with some items being flipped. So they, they didn't try to fit, like they, they, there were enough issues where they didn't really, uh, didn't really want to try to figure out how to make it work with fluid and stuff, but now is the time. So uh, they basically go into saying, and they show an example of, of like it working here. So with fluids, for example, uh, like buildings with symmetry, flipping is allowed over the line of symmetry to ensure the inputs and outputs match once flipped. So, uh, well, so this actually, sorry, is an example of it of it not working, right? Because this is how it is now. So if you were to try to flip it, uh, I don't even think it lets you, but if it did, uh, then you, you would be in some trouble because uh, the connections would be messed up and you'd be feeding the wrong fluid into the wrong thing. And we all know 
how bad uh, that can be. So they say the only proper solution is to flip for real. Basically, actually flip the building about an axis to produce a mirror result so the inputs and outputs are where you might expect them, but it's easier said than done. The pipes, uh, the pipes still have to line up with the connection points on the building itself where we end up in an even weirder territory of fluids going into walls. And then uh, they say there needed to be a limit on how buildings could flip, or could flip, sorry. Um, and after some doodling on graph paper and stuff, uh, they finally came to the conclusion that uh, yeah, you basically just mirror it, and this is, this is, I think, a bigger thing than, than, uh, it might seem like at first glance, or at least for me, maybe it is just for me, but, man, there's so many times where I've wanted to, you know, where I'm making a huge mega base oil build or something, uh, to where I need, like, two separate rows of refineries, and I want to do this, but I can't, because the, the, the fluid inputs don't match, right, so, normally, without flipping it, uh, this heavy oil would be over here, and then steam would be over here, and it's like you have to do a whole pipe mess. But now, with the uh, flipping for real, is you could flip it, and they're going to be mirrored perfectly, and then you can just connect them up, and it's super easy, really, really nice. Uh, so the available symmetry for each building is detected automatically when the game loads, so mods can make use of this feature without changing anything, too. If their buildings have symmetry uh, of their fluid connections, they can be flipped. So I could finally tidy up some of the buildings on my space exploration playthrough. Uh, that's when I someone did this, the final boss. So <laughs> this is an insane building, a space ma uh, manufactory from the space exploration mod. It has 12 pipe connections and only diagonal symmetry, which is inter interesting. So uh, says uh, Corex, I think this is, or Josh maybe uh, says it had me back to pen and paper scratching at the corners of my brain. I haven't used for a while flipping over to the di diagonal. It doesn't just move the position, it also rotates by 90 degrees, throwing off all my current code that could uh, reliably just rotate 180 degrees. Uh, so after some mild weeping, I began working, reworking large chunks of code, taking into account a direction adjustment when diagonal symmetry was in play. And uh, it finally started working. So here's what we can do now. Uh, working, so flipping is working on all buildings and items. We decided it was worth expanding uh, that to everywhere you might want to flip something, not just when loading a when holding a blueprint. So now you can hover over a building and press F or G to flip it, which is fantastic. You don't have to take a blueprint of it, like you can see here. Uh, like this is what I have wanted to do forever, <laughs> to, to be able to have a setup like this. Uh, flipping something in your hand before you place it, which is really nice. You don't, you, you know, you can just have it ready to go. And when copy pasting from one machine to another, though this won't change the direction, just flipped nature of the pipe connections. So you could copy like this to here, or copy this, flip it, and then copy it to here, and then you would get the correct mirrored version. Uh, and this way, flipping becomes a first-class operation alongside things like rotate, is, uh, in that you should be able to use it anywhere that feels natural and have it do sensible, uh, do a sens sensible thing. And this is just fantastic. Like, I don't know. It may seem like I'm getting overexcited for something as simple as flipping, but having had uh, fluid buildings and stuff like train signals and such not be able to flip uh, properly has been honestly just like i wouldn't say infuriating but it's definitely been a little bit of a thorn in my side and finally getting this will just make some of my builds and, and doing a lot of stuff so much smoother so much easier and straightforward without all this fiddling uh and this is just absolutely fantastic uh and then also the controlling assemblers i'm not a huge like circuit network person but honestly i can see myself even using it not to this extent uh, but, you know, especially like enabling or disabling and setting recipe and reading ingredients seem absolutely fantastic to me. Uh, so I'm really curious what you guys uh, have thoughts for, for what you're going to use this with, uh, like how you're going to utilize this. But overall, I'm really, really thrilled. And then the last thing, which uh, is just a tiny little change, and this just proves the Factorio devs are some of the best out there with actually listening to community feedback. Uh, and Clona ends it by saying, after last week's Friday Facts, there was a lot of discussion about the renaming stack inserters and bulk inserters. In short, it makes no sense that stack inserters don't stack items on belts and bulk inserters do stack items. Uh, so basically says that, you know, as devs, they tend to agree normally they don't want to change too much when they're adding new features, uh, which makes sense. But in this case, it just is too confusing. So when 2.0 comes out, they are changing. They took the community feedback, and I saw this. I read the forum post and the Reddit, and so many people were saying this. And uh, again, this just shows the Factorio devs are awesome and actually take into account feedback that makes sense uh, and implements it. So stack inserters will be renamed to bulk inserters, uh, and then the 
the what we the, the thing that was introduced as a bulk inserter that stacks items will be renamed to a stack inserter. Uh, this will be in 2.0, so this is not happening now, just to double clarify that. And then a new inserter, which can place uh, stacks items on belts, will take the name of the stack inserter. So that'll just make things way less confusing uh, going forward uh, once 2.0 comes out. And uh, that's just fantastic. A nice little, uh, little cherry on top there, if you will, uh, of, of a nice change. And uh, yeah, I mean, honestly... Pretty straightforward Friday facts, but some amazing stuff as always. I'm really, really itching for another one with like brand new content, like another planet revealed or something. But honestly, these quality of life ones are just every single one is fantastic and, and is just introducing features where uh, it's either something where I've wanted for a long time or it's something I didn't even know I wanted, but then it's like, how am I playing without it? So uh, this is just brilliant. I love it so much. Uh, I hope you guys are excited for this and enjoy it. And if you are, uh, feel free to drop a like on the video and I'd love to hear your thoughts below as always. Uh, again, you know, your thoughts like what, what are your plans for doing with assemblers now that we can control them with circuits uh, and uh, the fluid flipping. I can't imagine anyone, it, well, just uh, not just fluid flipping, but flipping for real. Can't imagine anyone be upset with that. But anyway, that's going to do it. Thank you so much. And if you're new, welcome. Feel free to subscribe to keep up with future content. And until next time, I look forward to seeing you all and do take care.